Okay, so about five months ago, I reviewed the MSI Summit E13, a two-in-one laptop that I thought was fantastic for computer science students. It came with a pen, had a great design to it, and delivered super fast writing and reading storage speeds. But my main issue with it was the price. And don't get me wrong, it still is. However, since the E16 was launched, we now get NVIDIA RTX graphics inside this thing, which in my opinion makes it super attractive for computer science students since you can pretty much dab into 90% of programming careers. So today I'm going to review this thing as a computer science student and give you all an idea as to how you can use the 16 inch laptop for your school needs. For starters, there aren't many 16 inch 2 in 1 Windows laptops in the market, and those that I could find didn't seem to deliver Nvidia RTX graphics. It's probably the reason as to why this current laptop weighs about 4.2 pounds, which is about 2 kilograms. It fits great in a bag or in a sleeve, and that's probably because it measures 14 inches by 10 inches. The thickness is standard, coming in at 0.66 inches, but the overall chassis isn't. Now, as a student, you might not like the finish on this so much mainly because of the fact that it picks up fingerprints extremely easy. According to MSI, it is a CNC aluminum chassis, although after opening it up for a second time, I'm not too sure. Looks like an aluminum plate with a glued in plastic frame. But the funny thing is that the material still feels great like on the E13. And don't worry, tampering with this sticker doesn't void your warranty in America. Inside of it, we have thick heat pipes, which I really appreciate. Two fans in the middle, as well as a Wi-Fi 6 card at the bottom, along a PCIe 4 NVMe M.2 stick, which are replaceable unlike the solder RAM sticks that rest on the other side of the motherboard. Probably my biggest issue with this laptop. But the speakers do rest on the side, tucking in this large 82 watt battery away from the heat pipes. The chassis itself does have some pretty good ports, that being an HDMI port and a couple of Thunderbolt 4 ports in case you want to connect up to 3 monitors and charge your device specifically with this USB-C 90W charger which is not so compact. A bit hard to carry although thanks to the fact that it is USB-C, you can always get something like the Aki Omnia 100W brick. We also have a webcam kill switch which I love about MSI laptops, an audio jack input, a couple of USB-A ports and a mini SD card slot which I know most of you won't use. With one hand, you can easily open this laptop and remember that it rotates the whole way. The hinges on this are quite sturdy with this 16 inch panel, these become looser towards the end of the fold. The display on this is absolutely color accurate, delivering about 450 pic nits of brightness and a very wide color gamut with 100% sRGB and 100% DCI-P3. In other words, say you're using Figma, Adobe XD or even Sketch while developing a website or mobile app, well, you'll know your colors will be pretty accurate to what the designer had intended. Even when it comes to gaming, the colors will be extremely enjoyable to consume and with a 120Hz refresh rate display, well, FPS games such as Halo are extremely fun to play. But keep in mind though that the panel can be pretty glossy. As for when it comes to studying and taking notes, the 16x10 aspect ratio helps. The pen is very adequate for taking notes and so when it comes to writing on apps such as OneNote, it can very much deliver a pleasant experience. Plus, the fact that we now get a 16 inch panel makes it easier to write vertically, almost mimicking a 4 paper size. The MSI pen itself almost feels like an iPad pen, delivering features such as Bluetooth shortcuts like opening one note with one click and whiteboard with two clicks. But don't worry, this can be modified through the pen software. This still uses NPP 2.0 with 4096 different levels of pressure sensitivity and it is accurate enough for note taking but not for professional illustration in my opinion. Very similar to Logitech's pen on an iPad. Plus, I am still left with the thought of wishing that MSI would have added a magnetic charge instead of having to plug this via USB-C. Do keep in mind that if you're not using this pen, the touchscreen is so useful for school. It allows you to scroll through PDF notes like assignments, code you need to go through, and even manipulate a whole design board on apps like Adobe XD. However, if you need to write code, I of course suggest use this tactile backlit keyboard. It is a bit on the soft side, very similar to the MX keys in my opinion, and the chassis did have enough room to even include a numpad. Although it made this whole area a bit awkward and no, you won't see me using this lonely slash to create my endpoints on Node. But with this, we finally get some proper arrow keys to go through VS Code, which is exactly what I was hoping for on this keyboard. 
we still get the same function keys as on the A13, so nothing too special there, but I still don't quite exactly understand the whole golden ratio marketing with these trackpads. Look, I won't deny the fact that this slim, silky, multi-touch trackpad is nice to the touch, which slides your finger quite well, it's not loud, and it's easy to click on, meaning that you won't be bothering people in class unlike some loud trackpads I used to hear. With it, I am still bummed out at the fact that it's short, which makes it hard to use Windows gestures. And well, the camera on it hasn't seen any upgrades since its predecessor, the 13 inch. However, I appreciate the fact we now get RTX GPUs in here. Depending on the classes you are taking, you will overall need a handful of softwares. But with Windows, my main suggestion has always been to stay to Doll USL. To install it, all you need is to make sure you have the latest Windows updates. You then just enable your virtual machine platform and all USL features within your features panel and then download and install Ubuntu 20.04. It is a super simple installation which can then allow you to use the new Windows terminal and have it all set up as your main terminal shell. I do have a tutorial on this so make sure you check that out. But essentially, all of this allows you to have a proper coding environment to play with Node, use Conda for Python, and work on any data science or web development projects. Of course, running benchmarks such as Jetstream 2, Motion Mark, and even Speedometer did not seem to struggle at all on this machine. So you know that you're covered when it comes to developing web apps with any framework really. This all means that you can have a Linux development environment all by staying within Windows, which can allow you to still use OneNote for note taking and Unity for game development. Now, my particular model does have 32 gigabytes of RAM, a quad core i7, and a 40 watt RTX 3050, which I of course decided to put to the test in order to see how well it would behave. I mainly wanted to see how usable Unity was, so I decided to download it and install it. My goal here was to create a first person shooter FPS template so we could take a look at build times. Creating the project did take a bit of time, which was around 30 seconds to make, Within, I was able to move around the world, edit objects like moving them, and even enlarge them and all of this took place in my world once I ran the project, which by the way, took 25 seconds to build and run. While playing, you can see that my GPU's 3D utilization fluctuates between 35 and 60%, but this small game did not seem to lag at all. Surface temperatures were fairly stable which made sense since internally, the CPU and GPU yield temperatures of 84 degrees and 72 degrees respectively. So the RTX does handle Unity quite well but for more accurate results, I did run 3D Mark Time Spy and Fire Strike. With scores of 3910 for Time Spy and 8623 for Fire Strike, we were sitting between gaming laptops and office laptops in terms of performance. I was easily able to play games such as Rocket League at high settings, so if you want to game while you're waiting for your next class, you can easily do so by pairing an Xbox controller wirelessly. Now, I know most computer science programming courses are taught in Java, and I strongly suggest you stick with Windows on this instead of WSL, mainly because I know for a fact that most Java tutorials are on Windows. Thanks to Alexander Siskin, I was able to test IntelliJ on my end by running an open source project called RxJava. This is a library you can include in other projects and the fun thing is that it has an incredible amount of tests. Now, opening IntelliJ on a big project with this machine takes anywhere between 10 to 15 seconds on average. Within, you can use the built-in activity monitor to take a look at how much CPU usage your project currently takes, as well as use the Analyze Plugin Startup Performance tool, which will deliver the startup times of all the plugins you currently use on your machine. Now, I ran the gradle clean command to have a clean run when running the test command. At this point, the fans do kick in while performing the test, but the cool thing is that while the project was running, I tried to use the IDE in order to see if the project would affect the performance. On this very laptop, things were usable, but you will encounter a bit of lag when playing with the project tree as well as loading some code files. I do recommend you run these tests on your current machine to see if it's really worth it for you. Overall though, I obtained total execution times of 4 minutes and 27 seconds, meaning that working with Java on the E16 model will do just fine. MSI do seem to be selling this as their base model since it's the only laptop specs I've been able to find on websites such as Best Buy. I do think that for the price we're getting a lot in terms of hardware but I still need to conclude in terms of reliability. For computer science, whether you need to take notes, play games while you wait for your next class, and get all your coding done, I think it's such a good laptop to have throughout your four-year degree. 
One thing I'd like to mention guys is the fact that the trackpad on this particular model I have seems to not work from time to time. So make sure that if you ever get a model, your trackpad works and you have a 30 day trial policy. And well, I know for a fact that MSI have really good customer service, but in my opinion, that's just not supposed to happen from the get go. So keep that in mind. As someone that recently graduated from computer science, I can definitely say this is worth checking out. Just always make sure you buy from a company that has a good return policy in case you don't like the product or it doesn't serve you well. I truly think two-in-one laptops are great for students and mainly when you don't feel like spending money on an iPad or a MacBook. I hope this review was useful and if it wasn't, I hope it revealed a bit of the workflow you can have on Windows as a student. I need to go pay my bills because we spent a lot of money on this office. I will see you all soon. Take care.